overgrown. Soon a big task I have is to clean this out and get it planted with some crops for the winter time. Uh, right down here we got some melons. It's got a watermelon. Some more melons hiding over here. Also in here we have lots of basil and tomatoes and some cucumbers and eggplant. Let's see if we can find a nice eggplant here. There's one. There's a nice eggplant. Joel, we have a question from Cece. All right, what's the question? He wants to know if we make our own Make our own compost? We do make some of our own compost, but we also get um, a lot of compost donated from the uh, city compost. Um, so we make compost with like our own food scraps and our own plant waste. Um, but we also are given some really great compost because uh, just with our own capacity here, we couldn't, at least the way it stands now, we can't make all of our compost to meet our needs. Great question. Um, over here, we got some cantaloupe. Uh, um, we got some basil. It got colder this weekend. Some of our basil has a little bit of has a little bit of indication that it was cold, too cold for it. It's rotting a little bit. We have some tomatillos. All right, so that's the greenhouse. Uh, if anybody has questions about the greenhouse, let me know. We mostly use the greenhouse for plants that love hot weather. So we grow our melons and our peppers, uh, tomatoes, eggplant, stuff like that in there. Uh, over here we have our pizza oven. Use that to bake bread and pizza. Uh, we have a wall of hops here. If anybody has a family member that wants some hops, let me know. I don't have anything to do with them right now. Uh, so this is the main farm. Over here are the student beds that have gotten totally overgrown because it's a sad year and you guys aren't here. Um, but we won't dwell on that. Um, over here, I gotta get on the other side of this so the sun's not blocking it. But this is the north bed or the north block. So I have the main part of the farm split up into two blocks. Um, and this is the north block, which is full of stuff that I'm gonna keep going this fall. Um, so over here we have this beautiful bed of eggplant. We have this row is full of um, perennial herbs, so things that grow year-round. Got parsley, lavender, thyme, rosemary, sage, chives. This is the last of our cucumber bed. These cukes are dying, drying up. Uh, then we have a a wonderful bush of beans here. I'm gonna get a bean to crunch on. Very good beans. Um, got a bed of kale, it's curly kale. We have a bed of flowers. We have marigolds, zinnias, and cosmos. Uh, I grow flowers partially just because they're pretty and partially because they attract bees. Step through this little gap here. Oh, no, I'm not, because there's a spider web. I'm gonna go around. All right, um, these are some beds that I just planted. So we'll get up close. We'll see these little guys. Uh, this is some brand new lettuce that we got going. Some spring onions. Uh, what are these, what are these? Oh, this is cabbage. Someday it will be cabbage. Right now it's just a teeny little green plant. So we have a question in the chat from Nita. Cool, what's the question? She wants to know, do you plant different kinds of plants at the same place? I'm not sure at if you're talking about the same rows or, what, what do you mean, Nita? Nita. Like uh, owning garlic, uh, is it possible to plant like different kinds of uh, plants at the same place? Oh yeah, um, so you can interplant lots of things. So like, uh, for example, like a, um, like a root crop like carrots, you can plant that below something else like, like lettuce uh, because they are kind of occupying different space. The carrot will put up a tall, thin 
uh, tall, thin leaves to get some sunlight for energy, um, but it doesn't necessarily compete too much with the lettuce. So that's actually something that we do quite a lot. Uh, actually here, I'll show you an example. Right here we have some bush tomatoes, some uh, bush tomatoes growing right with these leeks. So they don't really compete too much, although the tomatoes have gotten a little unruly. But a lot of plants don't mind growing with each other. And it's actually really good. In a lot of cases, it protects the soil and different plants take different things from the soil. So it can actually be great. It can work really well. Some things you can't grow together because they compete too much. Um, but we can cover that in more detail a different time. Uh, another great thing we got going here is these are some beets I just planted last week. And I'm going to show you some plant beets I planted three weeks ago. There's some three weeks ago beets. And then really quick, let me show you some, some two months ago beets. I'm going to run back over here. Hey, Joel, I got a question. All right, what's the question? We're looking, Dayton wants to know if we add nitrogen to the soil. Oh yeah, we add nitrogen to the soil through manure, um, but not with any uh, like chemical fertilizers, or, like sprays or anything. We just do it with manure. And there's a two month ago beet. That beet's ready to eat. And right here, we're growing these beets with these eggplants. They actually really love it. Beets, beets have a hard time with the really long summer days. Um, they don't like so much sun, so I was growing them with those eggplants over the summer and they were very happy. Thanks, it is a beautiful beet. All right, so that's the north bed pretty much. Oh, I have some other plants here. These are plants that I started a couple weeks ago that I'm gonna put in the ground today. These are some teeny tiny little parsley plants. That is some broccoli. And that is some Swiss chard. So I'll get all those planted. And that's stuff that can survive late into the fall or even into the winter. So this is the north bed, the whole north block. It's in pretty good shape right now. I've been working on this one a lot. Uh, in this bed, we have some potato plants. Those little speckles of green, those are, are potatoes. Um, I planted potatoes all down this row, but a lot of them didn't germinate, so I have these big, big gaps between them. So I might just leave it, or I might, I might plant garlic through this row when I get my garlic. Um, and then over here, this is the south block, and this is an area that I had to start putting to bed early because um, there's just too much going on this year. It's been a little bit of a crazy year. Um, but in these, yeah, it's just a little bit. Uh, in these first rows, I have summer squash. So we're gonna watch a video about zucchini today, a cooking video about zucchini. And I harvested those last week and that was pretty much the last of the good zucchini. As you can see now, these plants are really dying off. They've had a long life. They've produced a lot of food, but some of them are still producing some good ones. Um, these are called cube of butter squash. They're a yellow zucchini. Um, and I have a couple different kinds so here. Let's see. These ones are really dying. Oh, but these are called patty pan squash. They make these cute little, cute little spaceship flying saucer kind of squash. And then you have like the traditional zucchini going on right there. And then I have my tomato plants. Um, if you guys remember that big windstorm a couple weeks that uh, made all those fires so bad, they also tore up my tomato plants. They really tossed them all around and tore them off their lines. Um, there is a question about produce. What was that question? There's two questions. There's one about how do you keep track of what you plant and when? Oh, that's a great question. So I am I am a very selectively organized person. Um, I, I am pretty good at just letting whatever happens happen. But um, when it comes to farming, you have to be pretty diligent about record keeping. So I keep a notebook in the spring 
right after Christmas, I start Christmas shopping for plants and I go through all the seed catalogs and I pick out varieties that I want to grow. And I make notes and I have to do lots of calculations based on how much space we have um, for how many plants I should start. So every week I check back in on my notes and make updates or check things off to-do lists if I've ordered them. And then in late February, early March, I start, I start starting seeds. All these tomato plants, I started the seeds for these like the last week of February. So if you want tomatoes, you have to really plan ahead. Um, and then, yeah, I just keep track of records. Like this year, there were some things I planted way too many of. And I was like, okay, I don't need to plant 60 yellow zucchini plants. I can plant 20 and that'll be plenty. So it's a lot of record keeping. Um, it's kind of like an office job, but you don't ever really have to be in an office. Um, and then somebody asked about where has the produce been going? Um, so the produce usually on a, on a usual year, we run a farmer's market with, with our summer intern students. And you will all hear about that more. You could all, some of you could potentially be interns with us next summer, um, but we didn't have interns this year because of the pandemic. So I didn't quite have the capacity to run the farmer's market. So what I did was every Wednesday, some of my friends came up and helped me and we would harvest whatever was ready and we would take it to a food pantry and we would donate it because during the pandemic, lots of people have lost their jobs and there's a lot of people who are struggling to get food and struggling to take care of their families. And a lot of time food pantries will have, you know, lots of non-perishable mm. things like bread and uh, canned beans and all that jazz. But uh, oftentimes they don't have much for fresh produce. And if they do have fresh produce, it's like boring stuff like iceberg lettuce and like gross out of season grown in a greenhouse tomatoes. Um, so we were really happy to be able to donate lots of good food and we've been doing that since about mid-April I think I started the first donations and every week uh, every week we've donated food and some weeks we've donated up to almost 300 pounds but usually it's been right around 100 pounds of food a week that we've been able to donate so that feels really good it was definitely a hard year in a lot of ways and it's sad to see it was really sad not to have students here this summer and it's really sad to have you guys not here right now. But um, it feels good to be able to uh, donate lots of food. And the students that were here last year really helped us get to that place where we were able to donate lots of food to hungry folks. Um, so that's great. It's really great. Um, over here, we got some of uh, probably my favorite things we're growing on the farm which is our peppers. We got lots of sweet peppers and hot peppers. Um, and just this last like 10 days, these peppers have really been ripening. And this week I need to harvest tons of them. Look at this beautiful, big, fully ripe jalapeno. This week I need to harvest tons of them and make a bunch of hot sauce, pickle them. And I'll make some videos about that for you all to see. And I'm also going to harvest a bunch of the sweet peppers and make chili sauce. And I'll hopefully be able to can it all. And someday when you can all make it up here, I'll share it with you. Uh, so if whoever asked about compost earlier, here's our compost bins. So like we cleaned up all of our onions. And we have all these onion skins. There's a volunteer squash plant growing in here that was composted last year. Um, and then over here, you see all of these tarps. Um, we have this really nasty weed growing here that's called bindweed, and it's in the morning glory family. And it's this stuff right here. It just like, it grows with these long roots underground. And just by pulling it, it's just really, it's a frustrating thing to do because it just never, ever, you never get all of it. And because I've been here mostly by myself, I have been just covering this area to try to suppress those weeds for now. And 
and I'll be able to take care of them better in the future. But for now, I'm just trying to use the sun and the extra heat from the tarps to kill the weeds. So I just got a request to go see the chickens. So let's go take a peek. Here's some chickens. We have two chickens and a duck at the farm right now. There's a chicken. There's a duck. Let's go find the other one. I gotta replace their water. It's a little muddy. So this is the orchard. So the, the birds live in the orchard because they like to eat the fruit. We have cherry trees and apple trees and pear trees. We have some berry vines. Oh, I see the other chicken. There she is. Oh, we got a couple eggs. We'll eat those for lunch. Uh, yeah, and so and back here we have the rest of our trees. Um, we have a pear tree that has some really good pears on it. I have to pick those today or very soon. Most of the fruit is is off the trees. That windstorm really tore a lot of it up, knocked a lot of it off the trees before it was ready. Um, but there's a lot of apples on some of the other trees that we need to harvest and we'll be making applesauce and apple cider. Maybe some of you saw that applesauce video I did on Instagram. Um, I'll probably do another one and we'll definitely do an apple cider video because that'll be fun. Um, next thing I'm going to show you is kind of a mess right now because it's late summer. But um, this is our hugel culture area, which is um, a fancy word for a big hole in the ground that you fill with logs. It looks like trash right now. But um, it's like, so trees decompose over time. And that's what plants eat is decomposition of other plants. And trees are just massive plants. So what we did is we dug this big hole, we buried all these logs, and then we covered it up with soil. And then over time, it breaks down and all the plants that live in the top of this consume that. Um, right now, there isn't a lot growing here intentionally. There's some asparagus and some tomatoes and kale. Um, but what we grew in here was a ton of winter squash. Um, so I'm going to take you all into the gym. Um, we use the gym as a wood shop at school because that's just what we're like. And um, I'm going to show you some of the things that I already grew and am storing in there. A lot of vegetables don't actually need to be refrigerated. Um, because they have their own evolved mechanism of preserving themselves. So we harvested all that winter squash and we're storing it in the gym so that the outside of it can dry up and then it'll be good for a long time. Just on its own, it doesn't need refrigeration or anything else. So, oh, what happened? Am I still here? Oh. We can hear you, we just can't see you. All right, I don't know what happened. I'm a big dummy. Let's see. I think your video is just off because we just see your name. Okay. Yeah, I just can't figure out how to get back to the meeting I'm in. Mean.